Hello everyone, this is Hossein Mokhtarzadeh and you're watching my program on strategy. Since the world is changing quite fast these days, we probably need to adjust our strategies in life to get to our goals. So I ask experts about their strategies following pandemic or during pandemic. It's, it's a pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Arash Arabi, CEO of a Sprint Agile Company. Arash is a well-recognized Agile coach and an international speaker. Arash has helped numerous high-profile organizations achieve remarkable results. He's an evangelist of system thinking, culture, focused leadership, and empiricism. Arash's mission is to help organizations move from opinion-based decision-making to evidence-based decision-making, and we'll talk about this, what they mean. Arash is an extraordinary trainer and facilitator, known for running exceptionally engaging and inspirational workshops full of learning. He still codes and is highly skilled. It's amazing that they see being a CEO company and they still code. So well done, all right. In numerous programming languages and practices and various technologies. Welcome, Arash. Thank you, Hussein, for your amazing introduction. I'm so glad to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, taking your time and being on the show. So how's everything these days and during pandemic? Oh, <laughs> really good. I mean, not as good as before the pandemic, of course, but still really good, you know, managing to, um, given that we are at home and not working out as much and uh, pretty much sitting on the desk all day, still managing to be a little bit active, managing to keep the health going well. And even I'm a very, uh, I'm a very extroverted person, so I prefer to have lots of conversations and catch ups with people but still you know managing via zoom it's okay but right right i know you do you do a sport as well you do taekwondo right oh yes yes oh awesome yes. you're a world champion in that yeah yeah <laughs> tell us about that before we start the strategy <laughs> oh yeah yeah so i started taekwondo in um when was it 2018 and uh, i had a goal there was, a, there was the first Austra uh, international uh, championship uh, in Australia was due to be taking place in 2019. So that was my goal. I wanted to become the world champion uh, because, you know, that was a great opportunity competing in Australia for Australia and train for a year, uh, train really hard and managed to get the championship uh, title well done. for Australia. Well done. Uh, that's that's excellent. So, yeah, so maybe, is, maybe. Yeah, go ahead. Since the COVID pandemic has started, it's been so difficult not being able to train. I know. It's killing me. <laughs> no, I understand. So maybe one session we can talk about, you know, sports because I'm very fan. So you know that we can, we can just talk about that. But let's go back to our um, question. So what do you think about the strategy? Strategy is an interesting topic. I believe strategy has meaning when we look at it next to a goal or next to a vision. Strategy is our means for reaching an end. So for example, we may have a vision of becoming the Taekwondo world champion or something. What's your strategy in achieving that vision? Uh, and sometimes when there is change, things like COVID happening, significant changes in the ways business operates, in the ways that we operate as individuals, Sometimes our goals change, but sometimes we keep our goals, but only our strategy changes because of changing environment, we need to change our strategy to achieve the same goal or vision. So have you changed your strategy during, you know, so you are basically, we'll, we'll get back to this, but you have a company, you are a CEO of a company and um, you, you, you do like training, you do basically help organizations, you know, from different aspects of it. I would like to hear more about this, but have you changed your strategy? Because you definitely had some, some goals, right? Absolutely. Before the pandemic, right? Absolutely. Now. So the first highest priority thing is keeping the lights on, right? For the company, you gotta you gotta keep the revenue coming in. So when markets change, such drastic change, you know, like what we had in March and April, we need significant changes in strategy. Otherwise, the revenue is gonna get a big impact. So when the lockdown started, I had to cancel two courses 
and my revenue went from here, wherever it was, to zero. Wow. To one month. Wow. Less than a month. Really? Absolutely. Now, the questions I was faced with was, uh, well, what can I do about it? How can I change my strategy? And when I say my strategy, this is everything. This is not just delivery strategy, it's marketing strategy, is my advertising strategy, is my networking strategy. There's all these various aspects of the business uh, that involve and needs those strategies to change in, in such a um, quick uh, changing environment. So number one was advertising and marketing strategy because I had to uh, get the revenue started again. The other super important one was operational strategy and delivery strategy. How can I run my courses? How can I still deliver value to people when they are not face-to-face -face sitting with me in a course, especially because these courses are highly, highly interactive courses with lots of hands-on practices and hands-on activity. So maybe, 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 maybe can you just just uh, have a parenthesis here? Tell us a little bit about that that, and then continue your. Because you know people cannot follow what what type of tra trainings you have. Absolutely. So you, just so just a minute, and then you know. Great question on the spot. So we offer agile certified agile courses, mm -hmm. uh, and these courses cover various roles within the organization, such as Scrum Master, um, Delivery Manager. Um, program manager, product owner, various roles in the organization. Yep, yep, and for yep. people who may not be familiar with Agile, I hope everyone is familiar with Agile, Agile is a method, is a mindset for delivering value in a nimble, agile way and changing direction plan. So it's an alternative way of project management, program management, and product management. Right, right. So basically, if I understand it from a naive point of view, it's like trying to optimize the system or trying to think yes. like a system thinking and then deliver yes. as optimal. The, the best, the best is simple description of it is improving effectiveness. Right, right, right. We'll get back to this. I'm sorry that I just stopped you for that, but you were talking about your own strategy. Yeah. Yes. So I had to revisit all my strategy, basically. So I had to go back to the drawing board think critically, think outside the box. And after one month, revenue started going back up. It oh, well done. Up to almost 80% of really? how it would have been without. Well done, that's, that's amazing. It wasn't draw job seeker or job. No, no. <laughs> I'm just offered, well, do want, no, I don't need it. <laughs> just kidding. Don't need it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Right, right. So basically, you you applied uh, the, the, your own methodologies that you teach and you train other people. You you you, you face basically this uh, pandemic. You see that wow, everything changed. <laughs> so basically, the income dropped to zero, and what can we do out of that? You know. So can you tell us um, probably not the detail of it, you know, because of your your own company, but the the highlights, you know, that other people can take advantage of. Of, uh, of 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 this process that you went through, you know, like if, if I want to do, I mean, okay, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. How did I change my strategy? Well, it's really difficult to uh, make a repeatable process out of it. Sure. It all comes down to all the baggage that I've collected. Maybe baggage is not the right word, but all the capabilities that I've built over the years, because agile is. What's the word agile mean? Agile means the ability to change direction fast, right? And once, so agile is not just a process. Agile is an adjective, it's an attribute, it's nimbleness, is agility, ability to change direction fast. And once you think about agility day in, day out for years and years, your mindset kind of becomes that way. How can I quickly come up with a hypothesis and prove it and see if it works or not? How can I do some uh, sorry? How can I do some thought experiments to see if my uh, if, if whatever opinion that I have is going to work or not? 
And how can I experiment with it? Yes. Right. Can I stop here? Can I just ask you? This is actually an amazing point you mentioned. You said, how can I bring or test an hypothesis, right? Yes. I think th this is this is a very scientific way of looking at things, right? You, you, you have a question and you turn it into a hypothesis and then you try to test it and see if that works or not. Absolutely. Can you give us an example? Like, Absolutely. that's something that we all forget. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. So, I look at the world with an inquisitive look. Mm -hmm. I go without opinions. So, I, I, right. tell, I try to go in, into situations without opinions. Of course, I do have opinions, but I try sure. to restrain them. Even in my conversations, I try not to speak in a way as if I'm presenting facts. Instead, I will attempt to put things in as hypothesis. But based on what I see, based on the pointers, indications that I see that they sense my surrounding, I think probably this is the right thing to do. I think probably this is a good way of you know looking at something and then how can we experiment it how can we right. make sure this is the right approach the simplest way is do a thought experiment just sit together sit there and try to imagine how will this hypothesis work out in a broader sense if you want to actually do some if, if it works out well then you can do some prototype or some, some kind of simplified experiments can i the pilot program of this. Let me try it. Let's say I have a message, marketing message I want to send to my customers. I'm not going to send it to my entire mailing list. I'm going to maybe first show it to a few people, get their feedback. First, think about it, thought experiment, show it to a few people, get feedback, send it to like five people. How do they react? And based on these reactions, I refine my model. I refine that hypothesis based on the uh, feedback on the experiment, observations of the experiment. And then finally, when it's time, when I'm confident, then I send it to my entire, I may even not send it ever to my entire uh, customers and keep changing and changing and sending to more and more people. That, that, that's actually amazing, Arash. It's uh, something that uh, most of us learn through like education, maybe, you know, when we, we, we study at uni or even at some workplaces, they say, oh, let's, let's have a good question and then let's try to have a hypothesis around that and then let's, let's build, let's say, MVP or these type like minimum viable product type of things. But you have a lot of experience working with lots of people. We train them, we try to come up with, you know, help them to strategize themselves, let learn all these methodologies and apply them. Why do we forget? Why do we really, because you, you mentioned another interesting point in terms of observation and opinion based, because most of us, when I look at something or when I see something, I just want to judge. I just want to say, oh, this is, this might be that, this might be this. I just want to make, you know, like a quickly come to a conclusion, right? Jump into a conclusion, right? And just observe, observe and do like, do not judge and try to really understand it without, you know, even if the emotions will be, you know, arising, then trying to really understand what these things mean based on the experience. So what, what is wrong? What is happening here? Well, I have a hypothesis for that. <laughs> well done. <laughs> what is that hypothesis? Perfect. I think it has to do with our ability to be comfortable with our vulnerability. Because acknowledging that we don't know things, acknowledging that the universe is so big, so complex, and so many interrelated factors and variables affecting each other, and we are only a very insignificant part of the picture. Yep. Once we acknowledge that, then it becomes easier to embrace uncertainty, embrace change, and accept our, play, accept our own place in the bigger scheme of things. Then we don't try to overinflate our perception of the world based on our facts, based on our life experiences, because that's only one way of looking at the world. There's infinite number of ways of looking at the world. And many of them will show partial pictures of the entire universe. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, having this knowledge is not enough, right? 
So having this knowledge that yes, you are you are really part of the story. You are you have to observe things. You know, you may know theoretically, right? But what what is your advice on on making it really second nature? Yeah, habit. Let's say. How to get there? Well, that's very hard. I think um, I know. Okay, one of the ways. I can tell you one of the ways that improved me, made it easier for me uh, to get there was I signed up for a program uh, called uh, Daniel Goldman's Emotional Intelligence uh, Coaching Program. It was a one-year program uh, that took us through a long journey of improving our emotional intelligence. And finally, I got certified a few months ago. during this program, so emotional intelligence have a number of aspects, a number of domains. Uh, basically, to, to put it in simple words, emotional intelligence is the four domains. The ability to understand your own emotions, the ability to change your own emotions or manage your own emotions, the ability to understand the emotions of other people and the ability to influence the emotions of other people. These are the four domains of emotional intelligence. The most important, the hardest, and the foundation is the first one, ability to understand your own emotions. So this is basically emotional self-awareness and uh, in layman's term, it's the ability to be comfortable in your own skin. And I was very fortunate to have an incredible coach for the duration of this program. And he dug really, really deep in me. He was like asking questions which I was very uncomfortable answering. And uh, it was basically a type of therapy, but typically therapy is looking at past, you know, looking at what happened in our childhood. But it's a kind of therapy which looks at the future instead of the past. And this experience made it much easier for me to be able to be comfortable with my vulnerabilities and accept, well, this is my place in the universe and you know, basically drink my own medicine. <laughs> that's, that's, that's awesome. Uh, you, you, basically, you, you remind me of a type of, like you mentioned, yeah, like a therapy, like a CBT, like cognitive behavioral therapy, mm-hmm. or people talking about... Um, what do we call it? Non-invasive, non-violence uh, communication, or sort of compassionate uh, communication that you you first observe, observe your own feeling if something happens, then try to basically say, okay, what is underlying need for that? Because there's a need that's not met, <laughs> for maybe that that is being um, triggered, and then even understanding the the person uh, in front of you or a person you're dealing with. Absolutely. Right? And- Absolutely. And I would like to, as we were discussing, I, I remember that there's something else which is super important I'd like to add, is the, the role of spirituality. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think personally for me, spirituality plays a big role in uh, helping me uh, acknowledge that I'm just part of the big picture and uh, that you know I only have part of the picture and treat the world as hypothesis with experiments. That's awesome. I think we, we probably need another session to talk about emotional intelligence <laughs> and you know all these details because we are we are both very interested in that. It's I think everyone is just really interested in trying to learn themselves and you know how to how to basically manage the emotion and everything. So what what is next now, Arash, in your own company and you know getting out of hopefully this pandemic? So Sprint Agile is currently only offering online courses, live online courses. Um, even though we are allowed to have in-person courses as well, now my strategy is <laughs> cool. not to go back to in-person uh, courses yet as much as I love them, you know, I miss them so much. Uh, but I think strategically it makes sense to keep going online at this stage. Uh, maybe later there could be more demand for in-person courses that we can uh, start running. and. Uh, you know, get that energy boost out of it. Um, in terms of uh, the company, so my book is coming up soon. Oh yeah, yeah, great. Time. Yeah. yeah, and uh, that's a value add proposition that I'm 
providing in the for the courses so anyone who signs up will get a free copy of the book as well uh, at this stage i'm not looking at uh, expanding the company or getting bigger that's you know for the past one year my strategy has been no uh, no growth but keeping the size as is uh, and keeping that strategy going we keep the size as is focus on quality happy customers try to have an impact on people's life and help people go back to their organizations and help build more agile organizations rather than just pumping out certificate after certificate sure sure so what, what what's the main reason people come to you uh it's quality absolutely the quality mm -hmm. and when i say quality it's the experience mm -hmm. so my goal when i go when i start the course is not to help people get a certificate or not to help people learn my goal is for people to have a memorable experience that they're going to remember for the rest of their life so something that will be a big thing in their life and big thing in their career so do you do you have any you know before before any of these trainings do you have a set of let's say goals that you want to achieve or you just basically start a course and up, observe these people and say oh based on what i observe we should focus on these and that so i got learning objectives uh, i got the curriculum and everything all that is set sure. but every session is different because based on the questions things change obviously. the slides are set like we follow a set of slides but maybe you know this time i have we have certain conversations first on the first day maybe in a different course we have those conversations on the second day you know depending on how things go what, what kind of companies are you so basically is it more of a computer like computer based or is it any kind of company would come every up? company is com computer based now you know right. every company is a technology <laughs> like sorry for that or a, you know police or the government everything yep, yep. So, yeah we got pretty much all the big names that you might have heard of of had uh you know, students from and have anz nap commonwealth bank like the banks of course all all of them me bank uh the uh in terms of manufacturing we have like toyota we have people from mining bhp um people from technology we had people from amazon aws uh who else there's so many that i can't even remember now but the, the question actually, maybe before before we start this interview, we sort of uh, started talking about this, it comes to, you know, to mind that, uh, again, through your trainings, you know, people will come to get value, right, from, from this and then get this, it's not just a certificate, they just want to really apply it and get the effective work done. So, is, 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 or are you guys changing, or is the methodology or this framework is changing itself as well? That's a brilliant question. I mean, I love that question. So basically, is agile being agile enough, mm. right? So agile, when we say agile in the IT industry, the first thing that comes to people's mind is a methodology, is a way of working. So instead of doing all the requirements up front and going through phase gates and handoffs and things like that, we build a team and work collaboratively and iteratively and uh, those kind of stuff. Yep. Well, that is true. However, uh, that's not how, that's not the end goal. That process is the means for achieving an end goal that is agility. It is the ability to respond to change quickly. So when I go to, you know, when I run my courses, I talk about being agile versus doing agile. Actually, this concept is not from me. It's from Ahmed Sidki, one of really famous agile coaches. And um, I think he's the founder or one of the key people in IC Agile, uh, International Cons Consortium of Agile. Uh, and he talks about being agile versus doing agile. What does that mean? Doing agile is the process of agile, you know, following all those rules and ceremonies and artifacts and those stuff. Versus being agile is ability to respond to change quickly. So that process 
is only there to help us achieve the goal of agility. And too many times people get bogged down on the process of doing agile that they forgot that this is actually slowing them down. This is reducing their agility because they're focusing on the process. They should be focusing on being agile. They should be focusing on that experimentation mindset. How can we change things quickly? Processes doesn't matter. Processes is only for the beginners, you know, they just come from all these hierarchical companies. They have to kind of follow the process a little bit so that they can become advanced and they can focus on agility as an end goal. So to answer your question, agile processes, there are various organizations who come up with their own processes. There is Scrum, there is SAFE, there is I don't know, so many of them. Some of them are very agile, some of them are not agile at all. So you see a variety of um, frameworks that are adapting quickly, and you see a some of the frameworks are there just as they were 20 years ago and not changed. Right, right, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, I believe we should, we should talk more about this one, hopefully, um, in upcoming, you know, um, interviews but what, what, what you know these days many people are really struggling right so financially you know mentally there, there would be a lot of problems because of the all changes that are happening in the world like what's what we see in victoria so we were quite good and suddenly we see like oh today was like 70 something uh, overall in australia which is most mostly from 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 uh, from victoria so if someone comes to you right with all these struggles having this mindset what would you tell them to to overcome you know these challenges let's, let's talk about financial challenges okay so uh well people have to put bread on the table whatever that means yeah. sure of course sometimes sadly when things like this happens when the job market is bad some people sadly have to do jobs which are not their own work or they have to do delivery, they have to do something to put food on the table. Uh, it's quite important to think of whatever that you're doing now, just to put food on the table as temporary thing. And I know people know that it's a temporary thing, but sometimes just the number of hours that you have to put into it makes it difficult to focus on looking for your real job, looking for your, you know, what you have been investing during your career. Your passion, for example. Your passion. Yeah. And um, let's say, for example, if I'm a scrum master, I'm, I get redundant. And of course, I have to pay my mortgage and everything. So I have to do whatever I can to get some cash flow. Now, if I'm doing eight hours of something, like, for example, delivery or whatever, then there's not much time left for me to apply for positions sure. and you know <laughs> keep feeling exactly. myself. And and this is what makes or breaks it because when jobs is less, competition is higher. Yep. So where maybe previously you were competing against people your own level, now you're competing against people who are much better than you. So you gotta sharpen that sword quickly and quickly because otherwise your competition is sharpening their soil, they're improving their capability, they're learning and improving. If you stay where you are, those capabilities are going to be out of uh, out of market, basically cut it off. So uh, my advice is uh, your number one priority needs to be improving yourself, investing in yourself. Uh, Warren Buffett says the single biggest investment you can do is in your own, in your own self. It's not shares, it's not gold, it's not property market, housing market, it's in your own capability. And you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on it. I mean, you can if you want, but that's a shortcut if you can find good courses. But even if you don't have the money, you can always go and do self-learning and put your put goals for yourself i have this come write down your learning objectives like this is my learning objectives these are the things that i have to learn the next week i'm going to spend these number of hours per day 
these YouTube videos, these TED Talks, and I'm going to reflect. So reading is part of reading and listening, and input is part of it. That input is going to come, come input from this way and go out from that way, you know, if you don't apply it, yep. if you don't reflect on it. So it's quite key that once we learn something, we practice it. And maybe you could write blogs on whatever you learn. Maybe you could run presentations, free meetups, free presentations for your peers and help the community because that solidifies the learning and builds that capability. Now, that's much easier said than done. And there are so many distractions, like, for example, the number of COVID cases in Victoria. It doesn't really matter. Like, we should absolutely not care about how many COVID cases is there in Victoria because it doesn't affect our day-to-day -day abilities. I have stopped watching news for, like, two or three days. Sorry, two or three years. Two or three years. Okay. And now I get my news from anecdotal things that I hear from oh people that I talk to. I didn't know there are 70 cases of COVID in Victoria. Oh, really? Did, did, did you know that there's a, this is a, there's a pandemic? Did you know that? I knew there was a pandemic. <laughs> I can't go out. That's a good one. <laughs> so, um, of course, these are all much easier said than done. But one of the principles we talk about Agile is prioritization. What's high priority to do? We've got limited mental capacity. What Definitely. are we willing to invest mental capacity in? That, 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 that's actually amazing because, you know, you, you again remind me of like Esteban Covey's, you know, um, few pages, the, the first uh, pages that he talks about um, your uh, circle of concern and circle of influence. Basically, exactly what you're talking about priorities. Because still, yeah. circle of concern is huge. All these, you know, things that happen in the war is big, right? My my family, you know, all these, my job, my career, whatever. But the thing is, we cannot really do much with with all these concerns. What we can do is very small circle of influence, right? That that you nicely put into like prioritizing, you know, understanding that what it needs. If if, if I need really to just work, bring um, a bread on the table. So that's that's number one right but then then I, I i have to do this quickly hopefully and then you know of course there, there's people have, have really these these days we, we hear huge problems and and actually i got got some like emails and stuff so from 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 really senior people that still they are struggling as well it's not like something that's oh it will, it will pass easily so we all know that we all know these challenges so all right she's always uh great talking to you it's around nine, uh, 30 minutes or so we have talked i think we should we should have arrange another one if you have time next Absolutely. next maybe in months or so we can catch up and discuss more because these are really great topics and yeah you guys are doing fantastic job in terms of educating the next uh, or the people who really want to do work effectively. So is there anything that you wanted to say in this um, talk or interview that I didn't ask you? Thanks so much, Hussein, for uh, giving us this opportunity to be on your show. Pleasure. Uh, amazing interview. So I would like to close with saying to people that times of difficulty, times of hardship, are our times of growth. If you look at individuals or societies, their biggest growth has been in their most difficult time. If you look at history of Europe. Look at, you look at people like Nelson Mandela. What made them become the people that they are? Great countries, what made those countries become those great countries? It was the times of hardship. So please be optimist. It's hard now. It's very difficult. Look at the bright side. Focus on your circle of uh, influence. Yeah. Influence, absolutely. Focus on your circle of influence. And when we come out of this, however long it is, six months, two years, ten years, it will end and we will come out of this and we will be stronger people and stronger species. Thanks so much, Hussein. It thank you very much. Being on your show. Oh, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure, and I really learn a lot, you know, when I talk to you. 
Um, thank, thanks a lot. I talked to Arasha Ravi, CEO of um, a company called Spring Agile, and I'm definitely will invite, uh, invite Arash whenever he has time to talk more, more about Agile and all these different techniques and uh, mentality or different types of uh, frameworks. Thanks again. Uh, and you are watching my program, I'm Hussein Mohtar Zadeh, on strategy. Have a good day or night. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.